waiting a motion to open the meeting. Motion to open the meeting. Second. Second. All right. All in favor of opening the meeting, say aye. 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 Any, uh, aye. any opposed? Okay. The meeting of uh, the Climate Action Plan Committee is officially opened uh, for January 22nd, 2024. As I i uh, just like to make an announcement at the beginning of the meeting. This is an open meeting. The public is so welcome to attend. Uh, there is no public participation or public comment. Actually, tonight on the agenda, there is not public comment, uh, although it is on the agenda frequently. Uh, it's critical that observers are silent so that the work of the members can proceed without interruption or distraction. So with that being said, uh, we have a special um, unexpected visitor tonight, a uh, select board member. Uh, Mr. McCrisky, he said he wanted to address the meeting. Sorry? Okay, so if you would like to address the meeting, uh, please do so. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm here on a fact-finding mission. And wow. uh, we had a um, great meeting at the Mass Municipal Conference over the past weekend. Each year at the Mass Municipal Conference, as you may know, brings together selectmen, mayors, councilors from all over the state, representatives, the governor, lieutenant governor, congressmen were there, senators were there. And it's a, it's a time for us to learn, you know, as a group, and have resources available to us. So I wanted to come before your committee to, um, to ask for your assistance in coming up with a list of items uh, that I can move forward to help out on the issue of climate in Stoughton. Okay. I'm very proud, very honored, and humbled to have as a very, very dear friend of mine is a former EPA director under President Obama and the climate control um, czar for President Biden. And uh, she is a very good friend of mine. You may not know. Can I just uh, ask you who her name yeah, is? And, and I'm sitting here looking at her face. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay. Yeah. We'd probably recognize the name. Yeah, Gina, Gina McCarthy? Gina McCarthy. Okay. Right? I said, this is where my brain pops in and out. <laughs> you may not know, Gina McCarthy started her career in this building. Oh, wow. She was the Board of Health Agent, uh, Assistant Board of Health Agent, back in the early 90s when I was first elected. And we just got to know each other. She then left here and went to Canton as their Board of Health Director. After that, she went on uh, to Connecticut and DEP came back to Massachusetts and DEP as well, and then was um, hired by President Obama to head the EPA. So as you know, she was the uh, climate czar for President Biden and left last, this, just the middle of last year, and she's home. So I had the opportunity to have breakfast with her the other morning, just catch up, and uh, I asked her if I could you know, pick her brain and have her meet with me uh, to kind of give us some guidance. Uh, reviewed the minutes of your meeting, and I can see you, you're making some, some efforts in some areas. And when I asked her, what do you think we would be able to do in Stoughton? What does Stoughton need? You know, what do other communities our size do? Mm -hmm. And she says, just ask for money. It's all out there. It's all out there. She said, nobody needs to have big, giant plans and all these things. They make it harder than it needs to be. So. I told her I would like to come back, but I wanted to meet you folks first. And just going through the agendas today, I was surprised and I was like, good, now we'll get this going. But uh, I want to have what uh, you're sharing with me, bullet points, what you've done, little paragraphs, and that I can sit down with Gina and go over that with her, and, uh, and then I'll take you know, studious notes and, and bring them back to you. So it. Um, as I said to her, I said, Gina, I don't know this stuff. This isn't my area. You know, but I'm smart enough to keep people that are smarter than me around me. So whatever you folks feel, you do have an audience with her. So I'd say give me some information, some requests, anything that you're struggling with, put it down so I can confirm that. And I may even go as far as ask her if I can put down my phone and record a conversation. So we get it you know, verbatim. So, with that, I know it's a surprise to drop on you, but I think it's a, it's a great surprise to have. You know, Not an unhappy surprise. It, exactly, you know. It's one of those times I didn't walk in and you say, oh boy, what's he want? No, this is a good thing, though. So, so just your thoughts on that, uh, what you would think you need uh, briefly in, in case I talk with her. Because I know you're talking about a consultant. Yes. And when I mentioned that, she said, well, that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. 
You know, find out what your needs are, what is out there. And one thing that I go back to Congressman uh, Mopley with years and years ago is you don't ask for grants, you tell them where the grants are and what you need. And she more or less said the same thing. She goes, there's so many grants out there. I did talk with Pam, she's working on a few more, and I told her the same thing. I said, look at the federal end because she really made good points to me that just on getting stormwater under control is a very, very low-hanging fruit. We talked about that a little bit, and it did pop into my head. I was born and raised in my neighborhood. I've lived in my house for 30 years. And in the past 10 years, there are, there's stormwater flooding out my backyard. I never did when I first bought the house. Right. You know, so she said, you know, it's nice to have studies done on that. It's out there. The money's there. And, uh, you know, you've got to get what the community's needs are before you start looking into action plans and hiring consultants. So what are the community's needs? And, uh, and I guess every community is different based on where they live. If they're a waterfront, um, we, know, you know, we know that parts of Ames Pond, you know, gets right up there as well. We've had Rose Street flood out in recent years. That never happened when I was a kid in this town. And just areas down in my own neighborhood when you see, you know, some of it is the road that gets depressed. It just collects water at that point. But um, So, let me just say, we're, we're very, very happy to have any help, guidance, and suggestions. And we're happy that you came forward and you are having conversations with Gene McCarthy. Um, I, I will say uh, we know that there's a lot of money out there. It's more complex than that. Uh, but we know that there's a lot of money out there, which is one of the reasons we want to act. And I noticed and wrote down that she said, it's all out there, nobody needs to create giant plans. And I would think that we're not so much trying to create a giant abstract plan, but a more specific plan that is more focused on our needs and our buildings and our population, quite frankly, because it's about the citizens as well as the town usage of, of greenhouse gases. I've also learned, or gain the impression in the several months I've been in this role that yes, there is a lot of federal money out there. I've looked it into it a couple of times. I've looked into things and forwarded them to St. Mark and Pam, and they've said, we don't have time to go into this. I forwarded one to Kathy Stanley, who we know is our energy manager, and she said, and it just would just look so incredibly difficult. And she's like, yeah, this isn't gonna, you know, you're not gonna get this grant either. It's not a full-time job for us, neither of us, to write federal grants. I'm happy to have the town pursue federal grants. And if we find ones, we'll point the way to them. But I do think, you know, the point of the plan is not to have a big, beautiful, super long plan. And when you talked about, you know, putting the cart before the horse, part of the plan, or what a consultant helps do, is community engagement to sort of figure out, you know, what the community's needs are as far as you know, responses to climate action and, and, I'm sorry, to climate change and responses to, to extreme weather events and also what the community's needs are and the school's needs are, et cetera, et cetera, as to sort of, you know, moving forward to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So that is part of the consultant. We can do our best on our own as a handful of individuals um, with whatever context we have, but, but that is really part of what, what the consultant does as well. That being said, we would love to, um, I would think, you know, quite frankly, we're, we're still working in the areas of, you know, looking at other climate action plans and looking at what they're talking about, looking at what Kathy Stanley's been working on and what she thinks is next on her agenda. Um, so I can't give you like a bullet point off the top of my head. I think we can discuss it tonight. We can try to, you know, get back to you with um, some more concrete things. Uh, you know, I would say that we have been inspired by the Governor Baker's executive order, which sort of lays out what you call the leading by example. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this on the state government. You know, we're kind of, Kathy Stanley suggested to follow that, we're kind of following that, and quite frankly, it's, you know, decarbonizing the buildings, uh, you know, getting the buildings to um, operate with electric heat pumps, put up solar, Panels where you can put up solar panels, uh, put in EV charging stations, and you know, in, even in a general way, you know, community education because it is what what everybody else does too, and not just the town. So I've talked to. I want to let maybe Michael respond to that if he wants to, and then other people who are remote uh, to to give their thoughts too about this. Michael's running away because he's taking our minutes. Okay. Uh, 
it's on one very particular note, I know you'll get uh, uh, a lot of support from Jim Conlon on the stormwater issue because he brings that up quite regularly. Uh, like you, I've been, well, I've only lived in Stoughton 20 years, lived in a house for 10 years, it's only been the last two that my basement's getting flooded. So we're all, you know, we're all experiencing a lot of these and you know, clearly that's one of them. Um, yeah, I know that uh, you know Molly, uh, Molly's been very active in looking into you know grants. There are a couple of them that uh, uh, we are uh, you know, we are hoping to apply for on our own. Maybe you know with that, they don't require a lot of support from uh, the rest of the town. Uh, they do require some degree of matching funds. So at some point we will you know we will definitely we will definitely be looking for some money um, outside of grant money. Just sometimes in order to apply for the grant, uh, you know, we need that in our back pocket in order to you know, to uh, apply for matching funds. Uh, so I will, you know, one of our concerns is uh, you know going to be going before a town meeting, um, you know, and requesting some degree of funding, partly for a consultant, but also partly so that we can apply for these grants, knowing that when they come back and say, okay, can you match X percentage, we're able to do that. But the idea would be to find out what those grants are and what the matching funds are before we go to town meeting. Yes. No, with the budget the way it is now, we're not going to be voting for a budget that's got extra money in it just in case. It no, so I'll tell you exactly where we're at. Yeah. Specifically, it's the Department of Energy and Environmental Affairs grant, which we applied for, or were in the works of applying for last year, jointly with Canton, but could not come up with the matching funds. We'll try again this year. The grant is even not even out yet. I literally checked today, like okay. the current grant. It's going to come out, I think, pretty soon and have a deadline of May. So we're not even going to know until after May. I happen to notice, uh, look, in the last few years, you know, they sort of say, oh, we gave away, you know, this year we gave away 31 grants. This year we gave away 29. So that's kind of the range of statistics. So we have like a 30% chance. I, don't, I really am not going to know. And, and, you know, I think we're going to be in a good position because we're sort of already laying the groundwork right. to get it. But, but it is a planning grant. That EEA grant is a grant to plan the climate action plan for your committee so that you sort of have a roadmap to follow. Um, and I feel like the more, again, you know, we can come up with the gen with the generals, but what we would hope with the consultant assistance, anybody's assistance, wherever we can get it, quite frankly, is, uh, you know, how do we get from, you know, A, B to C so that we're at, you know, zero emissions by 2050, that we're, or we make a really great chunk out of it by 2030, 2035. You know, which building goes next, which building should be the priority as far as, um, you know, changing over the system. Where's the best place to put solar panels? It's one thing to say, hey, let's get lots of solar panels in town. Where's the best place? Where's the best place to put EV charging stations? Um, so that's the kind of complexity that we will be involved with. But, so yeah, I'm going to be meeting with her again, but I, I, I said to her... What is there any the way time? I could be with her too? Uh, well, let's see what happens there. Okay. Right now, I'm meeting, you know, like I said, I'm meeting with a friend right now, and I, I want to understand this a little bit more and be a resource for the people I serve in this town as well, as we all do. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. Being told that the sound is muffled, I'm sorry. Was that me not, was that me not talking loud enough? Can you hear me better? No. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm it was sorry. a little bit muffled, so I think that's why I left the meeting and then came back trying to see if it's going to be better. I think Rachel did the same thing. Okay. Yeah. It's saying that uh, there's an, well, it's saying that there's an echo. Is it a little better now, Rachel? Yeah. Yes. Michael, I could not hear Michael at all. Exactly. And I was dropping um, some of what. All right, I'm sorry. Um, I'm leaning forward now, and uh, I'm sure Mr. Bukowski will keep his voice up as well. We'll try, uh, we'll try to keep it so you can so you can hear us. Thank you. Thank you. So it, um, I just want to be able to go to her first, get her thoughts, and uh, whatever you can put together, a few pages, just what you're working on, what your challenges have been, okay. an idea of some of the grants that you have applied for, if you've been denied for any, uh, then I can just give her you know, an idea of what we're dealing with. And, uh, and like I said, I'll, I'll be taking great notes as well when I meet with her. Okay. Uh, because by the time I get back here, I'll probably forget what she said. So right. I have to rely right. on my notes. But we have a great opportunity to have a person that knows more than anybody on this subject matter. And, yes, um, yes. I had um, I, I spent probably about, oh, about 35 minutes with her the other morning after her um, her speech at the MMA, and I'd encourage you to log on to the Mass Municipal Association, okay. mma.org, 
and they'll have, um, I believe, the uh, audios anyway. I didn't see a lot of cameras there, but the audio anyway of the presentations. Okay. Uh, so you'll be able to hear what she had to say. And she really, uh, she energized a lot of people, and uh, it, was, it was a good thing. And, uh, so if we can get her help, can't ask for anybody better. I saw her speak at the Boston Bar Association a couple of years ago, and she was fantastic. Oh yeah, no, so she's lit the room up. Yeah, no, oh. just, she's got that way about her, you know. And um, and, and I don't think uh, the JC worked with her, but um, she's just she was such a, a ball of light in this place. I mean, she was a hot yeah. ticket, really does. You uh, you seem to uh, have a little concern about our ask at uh, town asking for. Uh, no, I, I, town meeting, no, no, I, I just, I, I, when we get the town meeting, I like things to be very specific, okay. not general. You know, okay. I mean, the residents have a right to know what we're going to have, okay. why we're asking for money, what it is, what's the exact dollar amount, what have we done to research, why do we need this, okay. you know, and, uh, that would be good. yeah, and I, I think that's, it's a plan, you know, and uh, the better plan we have, the better prepared we have to, uh, to go after grants. We've had sometimes great luck going after grants in Stoughton, and other times, We've fallen short, and we did one recently that I thought was pretty good, uh, only to have somebody say it was horrible, <laughs> and um, we didn't get the grant. And um, but then I believe, as I said to somebody else, I think there's some external politics there as well. And you, know, you never know. I don't play that game with people, you know. And um, all we'll do is take what those people say, and we'll put it to work the next time. When they say you failed in this area, we'll we'll add triple the amount to it instead of just trying to get better. But uh, we need to use PM wherever we can. And there's a couple grant people that I mentioned in uh, PM that if she hits a roadblock, you know, on the federal end, you know, I've got some friends that I know there that can open some doors for us. So that would be nice. We have, we have the resources. And again, uh, when it comes to this issue, without talking to Gina, I'm like a, I'm in the, in the middle of the water with the water war in the boat. So uh, with her, you know, I, I'm just going to be the conduit to represent right. our town and uh, be able to work with her. Great. At one time, I, I thought of maybe even having her, you know, asking her to come out to the town, you know, once we get some headway with what she's given us. And uh, who knows? Uh, but she is very busy. She still travels a lot. Sure. And, uh, but she's living back home now, so that's a, that's a help where I can just go a few, you know, a few towns over and be able to talk. Terrific. So, Perfect. I was I was honored when I asked her, and um, she thought, oh, "Are you kidding me? All the stuff we remember." So, but she actually, in her presentation, she even mentioned that she was the, uh, her first paid full-time position was Canton, but she started in stuff. Okay, so it was, uh, that's a fabulous we, connection. Yeah, yeah. We, we had a little hoop hoop from the audience, and it was uh, Chad Deb Roberts. We had a little okay. hoop in the back of the room. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just here to say, uh, let's let's do what we can to try to maximize what we can ask Gina. Certainly. And uh, let her know what we've done and uh, just find out if we're going down the right road. If we're not, what I would ask what she thinks we should be doing. And you know, and I'll come back to you folks after. I would imagine this will be a couple months by the time we get to that okay. point. But um, there's no big rush on this. You know, I know you have other things to do. And I apologize for popping up unexpectedly. Not at all. But it was just one of those, I saw your agenda and I'm like, great. You know, so. And, it's uh, right on point. Like I said, we're, we're happy to uh, take advantage of any connections, get any information, be pointed in the right direction. We just want to get to the end point, which is best for the town in right. accomplishing our mission. And I'm pretty confident she's going to help us get there. Uh, yes. <laughs> that's that's a great that's great to and, know. And so. I will as well. I will bring the minutes of your meetings so she can read those as well. Okay. And so that she'll get an idea where the town okay. is That's terrific. Okay, and you know how to get me if you have any questions. Yes, we do. All right, and I didn't know if anybody had questions. Oh, yes, anybody else uh, want to follow up, Rachel? Uh, Aisha has a question. Oh, Aisha, thank you. Oh, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Mahavi. Um, this is uh, for me the, a very great opportunity to network. I don't know if you can hear me clearly, because I know I wasn't hearing you got, um, out there, it was a little bit muffled. I don't know if my sound is coming out very clear. No, you're um, right. I really, okay. I really want to appreciate this opportunity that has been given to this committee. Um, ever since we started, we were just looking for opportunities to close the gap and see how we can practice how to respond in terms of um, understanding 
what um, how we define criticality in terms of Stoughton as a community. Uh, we have research subject matter experts. Uh, we're trying to follow um, every of the um, opportunities and examples out there that's been given to us by the Disaster Recovery Institute International. Um, and as a group, we have a, a long range plan, so to say. So basically, everything that we have put down, it's, it's, it's not like we don't have something that we have put down. But like she's saying, she just can't give you like a bullet point. And we're really, really looking forward to this opportunity where we can have um, someone like Gina, who is a subject matter expert, to you know, really guide us towards that way. And then we, as a community, we can benchmark ourselves based on our preparedness and find a way to track our maturity in all of our engagements and in terms of how we um, communicate to the people that we are concerned about. We're talking about the community in, um, in this regard. Um, I really want to appreciate this opportunity for you coming today. Um, we're trying to prepare for the effects of the impacts when it finally comes. We're not actually preparing for the causes. The causes, we already know what the causes are. But what we're trying to do as a climate committee is to prepare for the effects of this impact when it finally hits us mm -hmm. as a community. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. We appreciate it. And um, that's yeah. all I have. Thank you. My pleasure to help out. Thank you, Aisha. Rachel, comments? Uh, Aisha just said it beautifully. Thank you so much for coming by. Come by any time. Um, Absolutely. So, with some ladies. Absolutely. We like to be in close touch with uh, with our town officials. So this was very helpful. And, um, and also, just just as a person who lives in this town, it means a lot that you're here. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'll get back to you when yes, you're ready. Yes. No big rush will, on anything. I'll, I'll get be, back to you when you're ready. And please to We to just want to be able, in, in a nutshell, I mentioned bullet points. I know it's tough, but right. small paragraphs. This is what we've done. This is what we're looking at. And, um, you know, it, uh, don't be bashful if it's three or four pages long. I would imagine she's read things that are quite big. big and, uh, right. so, so I will wait to hear back from you folks. And um, I'm going to do some work with Pam to, to see if we can get her on the federal track. Absolutely, you know, and, yes. Um, and it probably wouldn't hurt somebody uh, on your committee you know, to look at that as well. If we get to federal grants, we can also reach out to you know, our congressman, Steve Lynch. Okay. Um, Jim McGovern is a friend of mine. Okay. As, as well as uh, we have Senator Markey right. as well. So along those lines, I have been in touch with uh, Ben Thomas from Senator Markey's office um, a multiple guy. times. And he has forwarded me a couple of you know grants here, grants there, and then you know, either I forward them to the town and they've said we don't have time or I've taken a look at it and dug into it and it's just like, which is not really going to be feasible. Right. Uh, but I would say drafting, and this is partly what Kathy Stanley has told me, it's like drafting uh, a federal, or sorry, responding to a federal grant proposal is really difficult. I think the state planning grants are really not that difficult. Like, you know, there's like 10 questions and throw in a paragraph here and a paragraph there. But the, the, And she also said that, you know, the chance, statistically the chances of getting any federal grant proposal are lesser. However, if Gina, somebody with expertise, or some other official might be able to say, this might be the kind that Stoughton would actually be really in the running for, go right. for this one. Um, she was very clear on the grants that are out there. You know, okay. And she was encouraging there was 1,300 people in the room and she was saying, apply for it, it's there, okay. put it to work for you. But I also understand is we don't know what we need right away, how right. can we apply for it? Right. You know, that's like saying, give me the grant when I, when I need it. Well, you know, you know, some of it, you, know, you could just sort of tell, like, oh, it could be useful to us. For example, I think one of the federal grants was about uh, low carbon or electrified, you know, garbage trucks or something. And I, that meant be like, well, of course, anybody would want to have that if you could have it and if well, somebody was going to pay for it. But that didn't really go anywhere. That's all and, I'm saying. And in that area of transportation, I know quite a bit of it. It's just the cost. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. can, you know, it, that cost, the, the, the price of a truck and a half, <laughs> you know, to get something. The money okay. is crazy and, and it's just not perfected yet for trucks. Uh, I'm very good friends with the Global Fleet Schneider National, and they run between Massachusetts and New York, and they have to buy two trucks to do the run. And normally, a truck can do it by itself. You know, it's electric. By the time they get out there, it has to recharge. It takes so long to recharge because the batteries are much bigger than the car batteries. So they, they're buying two vehicles to do the job in one truck. So 
it, uh, and, and something like that is, is it really, are we really doing the community a favor where we're going to go out and buy two of them and the you know, price is worth one and a half? Right. Well, yeah, that, that's so, not where we yeah. want to put our money. Like we right. want to put our money where that's part of the analysis of having a, a, a consultant is to say what's the best bang for your buck right. uh, to really draw down the, the, the greenhouse gas emissions. Sure. And just so. getting the right the right person to help in that area as well. Yes. So. Right, great. So that sounds very promising. We appreciate your bringing this opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. To us. It's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to. I had been hunting them down for a while and moving around and changing cell phone numbers and all that. So, and I would imagine you do that when you're working at the White House. I mean, a lot of people calling you trying to get you to do things when you're not there anymore. That's true. And, uh, That's it's just true. great to say that I knew somebody that worked at the White House. Sure. I just never, never made it there for lunch. Yeah. I tried. Not yet. It's not a, you never know. No, you she's out know. of there. So she, you know, people, they say in politics, when you leave your office you're in, your last name becomes cool. cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really is. So. All right. Great. We'll keep up the good work. And, uh, we'll do our best. Thank, Thank you. Thanks you. again, John. Take care. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. We will uh, turn to uh, item. Uh, well, that was that counts as item one. Our welcome. So item number two is a review of minutes, and um, uh, I do have some proposed edits to the minutes, but I want to give other people a chance to talk first. So maybe if I would go to Aisha. I know these came just a few hours ago. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to review the minutes, or if you want to take a moment now. Okay, let me take a moment, please. <laughs> okay, so you take a moment. I, I think I can just go over some of the little tiny things I had. Um, which first was, you used the reference a couple times on page two, ATM. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Town meeting. Okay, do you just want to type that up? Okay. okay, so that's a couple times on page two. Um, in the middle of page two, you're referencing, um, I noted last year's joint application, and I would just insert, and I can hand you this, my notes with on this. Um, so I think I can. Um, so in the middle of page two, uh, last year's joint application, I would say four grant from, and this is EEA, which is the Department of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And that's that reference to that $50,000 grant. Oh, and then on page four, you had a um, couple of references to the Sustainability Committee um, under Community Engagement and under IKEA. And just the full name of the committee is the Energy and Sustainability Committee. Um, then I had a more substantive point at the end, but I want to wait till other people can give us their. Um, my name is Miss Bell on page five. I, this is the most important note you're going to get this meeting. So. Okay. Yep. I see. I didn't. Mi I missed that. I see it now. It's my name, so I was looking for it. That's you know. okay. So. Oh, as long as we're on page five, on page five, um, under new business, and it says I spoke with the fire chief, and the new station, I would say we use some heat pumps, and I would also add and EV charging stations because that is specifically what I had asked. Of. Are you sure that they said they would be including them? That's what I had a personal conversation with Chief Carroll, and he That's said. Not what he didn't know the number. He thought it might be around five. He didn't know the number, but he said they're putting in the infrastructure, so it's not for what he called the apparatus. So I think it's just for other people who happen to drive there. So, so he wasn't talking about an EV charging station for the Mammoth fire truck, but he said he thought they were putting in infrastructure for about five EV charging stations. So that was, was positive news. Uh, Rachel, did you have any other changes? Okay, Ayesha, did you have any thoughts? Do you still need time? So I, the, the only thing that I saw was, um, you know, when on that new business, I think the grammatical structure was a little bit, uh, uh, Ms. Cochran was spoken with the fire chief. Um, you could rephrase that statement because you didn't really like that. Um, what? 
else? I missed I miss that. That was very good, Aisha. It should just say, under new business, Ms. Cochran spoke with the fire chief. So you're right. You. I think that was just kind of a typo. Um, all right. My only kind of substantive, uh, just wanted a point of clarification. So on page four, um, under interim recommendations, annual report, and we definitely had a discussion about the annual report, which is uh, all the committees are to do an annual report, which goes in the... I guess I call it the booklet that goes with whatever. Um, so I think the first sentence there after, so I think the only, the, the caption there is really annual report. And then the first sentence should say the committee's annual report will be in the ATM Warren packet. That's what does fine. It say now? Well, it says the committee's interim report. So I'm, I'm oh, oh, okay. Oh, right, right. The interim report yeah, is sub, it. okay, I you got it. it. All right, so that was the substantive thing. Um, that's great. I think those, uh, and I think you did a great job summarizing the quite serious it, it back and forth deliberation about the articles that I think that's laid out really well and very thoroughly, which is always great to have thorough minutes. So I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it's helpful having the video this time. Yeah. So you have to go back to it this time. All right. So anybody want to make a motion with regard to the uh, January 8th, 2020? That actually is, actually, I'm sorry, it should say 2024, the name of the... Oh, what does it say? 2020? So 2023. Okay, oh, so we'll let's... the next six months. Does anybody want to make a motion with respect to the minutes of the meeting, January 8th, 2024? So yeah, I would like to raise a motion to go. Adopt as, as uh, with the amendments discussed? Yes, please. Okay, any second? Second. I need a second. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. So those amend, uh, sorry, minutes as amended are now adopted. That is terrific. Um, all right. Next, I have an update and a very recent update on the <coughs> article. So we discussed it. We discussed uh, what the dollar figure was going to be. We discussed the wording and voted on that last time. I did send, uh, as we had um, the final version, to um, Steve Cady, who had it reviewed by legal counsel. And that's obviously much appreciated. It makes me feel very much better to have had a review by legal counsel so you don't hit some glitch. Um, he did, uh, and I just, again, I just got this around, whatever it was, between 4 and 5 o'clock today and forwarded it. Um, I can read it if anybody hasn't had time to look at it or doesn't have the email. It just um, does tinker with the wording a bit. Um, specifically, it does um, say, as far as the motion itself, I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds in the treasury, if any, or borrow. And I think that or borrow, like that clause was rewritten mm -hmm. by council. He rewrote it a little bit otherwise. Do you want me to read through it? Has everybody had a chance to look at it? Or you can definitely take a minute right now if you haven't read it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read it right now. All right, so let's just take a minute and let everybody look at it.
Any uh, thoughts or comments on the revised version from being reviewed by town council? I like it. It's okay. I, I think, think the additions are smart. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, my only, and I've already written back, I was told that Mark Tisdale is the one who's ultimately getting these put in the warrant. Uh, they're missing the word plan in a couple of places in here, like in the title. You know, Climate Action Committee should say plan committee, so I've already written to uh, Mark to say, you know, you skipped over, it, this skips over the word plan in the name of the committee. Um, so does anybody want to make a motion, again, to um, approve uh, this version of the proposed article being placed in the warrant? Yeah, I move to adopt the uh, revised uh, article as, uh, as written. Any seconds? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so we will move forward with uh, that then. That is excellent. Um, and that will be uh, uh, interesting at town meeting. Looking forward to that. All right, uh, grants update. I'm probably repeating myself from what I already said. Um, that um, we will be applying for the EEA grant. I checked the website. There's no information today as to what uh, their new grant is, what the, you know, or what the proposal is, or 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 um, whatever the official grant grant funding wording is. You know, it's it's not a, it's not been released yet. Um, whatever it is, the the grant application has not been released. So I will keep checking that. Uh, school engagement, um, I think we certainly touched upon this last time with respect to um, the meetings that we have had. I was hoping that somebody could, um, I think this is an important step, uh, come up with uh, email addresses for the PTOs for all the schools so that we have um, at least the PTO of the, you know, the dress of the PTO person, the person in charge of the PTO, so that we could forward emails to them, which hopefully they would turn around and send to their listserv. Is that something that anybody could could go about, you know, collecting that through the school principals? Rachel? Yeah, I, I can do that. Okay, thank you for volunteering for that. Okay, that's great. Um, Next on the agenda is just the general community engagement plan. I will tell you that uh, Janet and I went to the YMCA and did some tabling for our survey. Uh, Friday, probably Saturdays would be a better day to go. I'm sure we'll, we'll return on a Saturday someday. Turns out that a ton of people at the YMCA are not from Stone. So <laughs> that eliminated about 75% of the people, but the people who did fill out the survey were very nice. And uh, I did get a handful of more email addresses, which we're slowly building our email list. Um, with respect, sorry. I asked about tabling at the library. Oh, I don't think they're, I've never seen them allow anybody to do tabling okay. there. So, um, and in fact, they, they seem to be pretty strict even about putting the survey up. Very limited, very limited as to where they're letting the survey itself be put up. Um, however, speaking of the library, so I have uh, reserved the community room for Saturday, February 24th for a community, our first community engagement event, um, which we need to build what's going to happen at that event. I did talk with IKEA, which indicated they might support us in some way, and I followed up with an email. It may just be a gift basket to raffle off or something like that. I know where I can get raffle tickets. But I think uh, what we're going to need is, quite frankly, a flyer to distribute. Um, and then we're going to need a plan as to what we do at the community engagement event, uh, which is why you hire a consultant. But we don't have a consultant. We just have us at this point in time. But what I need you to do is think about that date, which I think I've sent to you before, but I'll follow up. I just need a sense of two things. I need a sense of commitment. I need to know who's really going to be able to commit to being there absent some extraordinary event. Um, and then secondly, I need somebody to create a flyer, which I think is not terribly hard because we had that wonderful uh, logo that's been created for us. Uh, and I think that, you know, the message is really just, you know, join us. Um, 
you know, to discuss, uh, you know, a student's climate action plan and, you know, public is welcome, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, we'll figure out whether there's going to be any refreshments or not. Um, but I also, I made it for 11 o'clock because I thought if we made it not so early in the morning, we might get a few students there. And, and that's, again, that's one of our target audiences is in the students at the high school. Uh, the recycling club and, and things of that nature. Once we have the flyer, uh, you know, we can send it to all town meeting members. We can send it to different, you know, connections that we have. We can uh, put it up on social media. Um, you know, I'd love to have like a thousand dollar I kid certificate, gift certificate, but I don't have that. But they did mention a gift basket. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody would, you know, want to donate refreshments or what we're going to do along those lines. We'll have to get that figured out. We don't really have that many meetings between now and then. But I do think this is our, um, our initial uh, community engagement event. Uh, we'll sort of, you know, learn from it. I don't know how many people have ever, like, attended focus groups or, or events of this nature that can um, sort of know how they're often uh, constructed and built and operated. Um, I, the one that I went to from the, the Ponset River Watershed Association uh, sort of had an aura of familiarity in that there's somebody there with like a, uh, not a, well, it could be a smart board or like, a, you know, the, the poster board where people make comments or suggestions or ideas, you write it up on the board, that kind of thing. So I think that seems to be, a, that seems to be a pretty standard thing. I don't know where we can get ahead. Maybe we can borrow something from the town as far as a smart board or some kind of um, board we put up on an easel. Uh, and also actually maybe even going to the community room and meeting with their tech person there because they have all sorts of stuff there. Um, we could do a PowerPoint, I'm sure, to introduce things. Uh, we could, uh, but I, I think actually I will tell you if, you if you Google the word, you will come up with things about community engagement. We can look at what they did in other towns. If anybody wants to call anybody in any other town and, and talk about, you know, you know, getting a template for how they did their initial community engagement, um, that might be helpful. But um, that's kind of a big undertaking. But I think, uh, you know, I think point number one is, is seeing that people can actually make that day and then be involved in the planning for that day. So I'm just going to open it to the floor. Any comments, uh, Aisha? Sorry, no comments. I, I was on mute. I didn't realize that. That's okay. Uh, Rachel, any ideas? Um, I mean, I, I think this all sounds good. I can probably attend. I'll just need to check child care, et cetera. Um, but I, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Uh, Michael? How many hours is yeah, oh, it'll, it'll be over an hour and a half or two hours. I think depending on how many people come. I think it would be a good idea to, uh, you know, have several, hour and a, say an hour and a half, uh, have at least three different people facilitating. Uh, I don't have one price for one focus groups. Um, oh, okay, you did. You and did. I, okay. I used to travel around the country doing that. Okay. Uh, in any case, um, but I think, you know, I think anybody, you know, anybody can kind of do this, especially if it's only a half hour, half hour, things like that, you know. Okay. Um, but uh, we definitely would want several people either from our committee or you know, somebody from the outside even uh, talking, oh, yeah, maybe Kathleen Stanley would want to talk for a half hour or something like that. That's brilliant. Um, Kathy but, uh, split it up. Don't have like one okay. person try to do an hour and a half. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, you, know, if, you know, one or two of us and then one or two outside people, break okay. it up, keep it, you know, keep it moving, keep it lively. Right. And, uh, Make sure that uh, when we uh, advertise it, we start advertising it as soon as possible and that we get all the details down. One of the things I saw with the Martin Luther King event, uh, I was tabling at that with the uh, Disability Commission, um, was that there really wasn't a schedule, a correct schedule published in advance as to exactly what was happening at what times and people got rather confused. Um, okay. And uh, I mean, they did a great job. It was good. It was a good program and all. But there was some confusion, I think, uh, among some of the vendors and some of the other people as to just what was going on when. 
and uh, might have had more turnout if it had been a little more. Uh, the times were not on the uh, on some of the uh, some of the adver advertising collateral. Okay. So uh, really important just to. But if it's an hour and a half, that's not you know not a big deal. Right, right, um, right, right. And you know, and I think it, that's a good idea keeping it keeping it pretty brief. Yes, um, yes. You know, it, it's you know it's really to introduce the people to the idea, to our mission, to what we're doing. Uh, learning about you know their thoughts about climate change, their concerns, you know what do they think the town should be doing? Um, you know I'm sure there's questions about you know what's the point of having a plan? You know you know what do you envision for the town potentially? And um, and I think this you know I think you know part of this is just to you know start a process which is going to be a multi-meeting process and quite frankly to be able to go back to town meeting and to be able to go back to people who are applying for grants from and say. We're trying to do the outreach. You know, we're trying to uh, to engage engage people in the discussions to promote awareness, to promote um, you know their thinking about what you know you know what our priorities should be, you know what our plan should be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think Kathy Stanley, my gosh, if we could get her there for half an hour, that'd be fabulous because she she she's um, just so expert uh, in, in what she does and she works for so many communities. So yeah, and oh, the, I'll have um, people like with a tablet, like filling out the survey as well. Absolutely, yeah. We'd be happy to make a version specifically for library engagement, et cetera. Yes, for exactly. Um, the other thing that we should have, and again, I don't know what, we'll, we'll, we'll know what kind of turnout we have. We should have some, some handouts or a handout that is not, um, I mean, nobody needs a handout with what our mission is. We can tell them what our mission is. I think there should be a, you know, call it action step or toolkit handout because if people show up because they're concerned and they don't really know what steps they should take, I think you could do like a double-sided, um, you know, full-page leaflet that could cover like three or four issues. So, you know, having mass save come to your house, energy efficiency, it all starts with the energy efficiency of the buildings. Um, you know, exploring incentives, you know, kind of the things that we put in our annual report about, you know, the action steps. Uh, if anybody wants to do that, um, you know, with maybe like some kind of uh, motivating message before the action step, um, that would be great, a project, and if nobody can do it, then I'll do it. So. <laughs> um, but I would love to have a handout so that people walk away and say like, I, I'm thinking about climate change now, here's the things that I can do, um, and as, as Mr. McCursky said, they're putting money into this. You know, now's the time to take the action. They're putting money into you changing to a heat panel. They're putting money into. I hope they're supporting solar panels. That's a complicated issue. But whatever the issue may be, that's that's one of the three or four issues probably: the heat pump, the solar panel, mass save. Um, you know, exploring EVs and things of that nature, or whatever else. I mean, if people think, no, let's just stick with three things. Here's the best three things, or there's a fifth thing. You know, there's there's ten things you can do. Uh, well, recycling and composting, so maybe those are the things. In any event, if people want to think about what they want a one-page leaflet to or flyer to be, double-sided, uh, and what it, what you know action steps um, they want to have on there, you know, welcome, you know, welcome ideas. Uh, but that's something we don't need to finalize until you know the week of the meeting. But we what we do need to finalize is a is a um, a flyer that introduces the meeting. If anybody wants to think about it and do it, and if not, I'll just uh, copy that beautiful logo and put something together. And, and we can uh, get to it um, next week or even before, uh, I'm sorry, before we meet again, uh, or even we can look at it uh, before then so we start you know, firing off the message. Or you can do the, um, you know, like save the date message to town meeting. I could, we could even send that out without the flyer yet. Um, because again, a lot of things it's good to get the message twice. You got the message once, two weeks later you get the message with a flyer again. So um, that's how that stands. But I, I love the idea of Kathy Stanley participating and um, we'll thank you of other people. But I'm glad to know that Michael's an expert. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, but still, I feel like I've been to one or two. Um, all right, so that just segues into messaging again. I don't know if we want to continue to talk about um, about messaging, about uh, you know a tagline for the committee. I don't know if anybody had any other ideas. If if we do, maybe this is a time to do it. Maybe it's premature. We obviously don't have everybody at the meeting tonight, um, but we can we can continue to think about that. Um, all right. Uh, 
if we're all good, moving on to number E, which is other meetings to plan. Um, obviously, we're going to be spending time uh, with the uh, community engagement session for February 24th. But uh, on my list of the next top meeting that we should have as a committee is with Paul Jafoon. So Paul Jafoon is the head of DPW. Uh, he is the one who works with Kathy Stanley. He is the one who knows uh, what's going on with his buildings and what shape they are in and what might be eligible for, uh, you know, the retrofits, uh, you know, what's been done, you know, does he, you know, again, I would pull out Kathy's list of work that she's done and what her plan was. Uh, but I think he's really central, and unfortunately he was not at the prior uh, town meeting with town officials I had. So if I get a date for that, I'll let people know if anybody wants to join me um, at that meeting. But I think I would definitely want us to you know, make sure that we sort of get dialogue going with, with Paul, because he's, he's very, very central. Um, the other, um, as far as other meetings, is again, if we get the PTO contact information, I'd love to set up. Uh, when we can, when we're available, members of the committee going to some PTO meetings and just going to the beginning of the meeting, hopefully, talking for five minutes, maybe having that leaflet to hand out, um, and then, you know, making those connections there with, with uh, parents who are active in the PTOs. Uh, as far as the other community organizations, I sent out emails to everybody that was on that really thorough list that I got um, from Michael a couple meetings ago. Some of them did not have a direct contact information. I had to go on the website and do that kind of abstract contact. But um, waiting to hear back from people. So uh, I have not, um, and I do know some people on some other um, organizations, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we can get some, uh, some traction there. So I guess in the short run, my thought is if people have um, contacts, they can sort of do a save the date for February 24th, you know, more information to follow, and then we'll work on a, we'll work on a flyer so that we can get a, an official flyer out. But meanwhile, we'll definitely be talking to Kathy Stanley, maybe a couple of other people to see if they want to come uh, participate. Um, oh, uh, Ayesha, I finally noticed that you raised your hand. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to play that on our website, the official website, and we also put that program on there. Oh, brilliant, and I didn't think of that. So I'm writing that down. We will announce that on our website. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll contact Trish, and I'll have that on our website. That's perfect. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, all right. And uh, segueing down to number nine, I think we already talked about the IKEA support. She hasn't gotten back to me with more details. Uh, but have I also mentioned this is kind of related to IKEA support? So we have a specific day for an Earth Day event that the Energy and Sustainability Committee will be presenting, which is Saturday, April 20th, in the morning at the library, which is two days before Earth Day. So that, I hope, We'll get more support from IKEA, <laughs> more, and uh, we'll get more traction, like Earth Day. Hopefully, we'll get publicity from the library, we'll get, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the other committee is working on that. Uh, we will obviously uh, connect it with our committee so that uh, all of our networks know as well, and you would definitely probably want to attend that event. Um, all right, and then uh, I just had a couple of announcements as far as other town uh, events that people might want to make time, if they can, to attend. And I'm trying to find my envelopes. All right, here they are. All right, so there is, uh, actually on Wednesday, there is a town meeting of relevance, which is, so Wednesday the 24th, I think it's at 5.30. It's a town planner meeting. So Bill Roth is the town planner. Good for us to show up at his meetings so he knows that we're involved. Um, I'm, making, I'm writing this down right now. But it's about a rezoning change. I'm not sure if it's kind of industrial or whatever, but it's really just an opportunity for us to be present and put in our two cents worth. Um, I think I forwarded that to people. Have people do people have that information from the town planner, or, or do I need to send that? to anybody who might be able to attend. And then it may be virtual as well, I'm not sure. Um, is anybody interested in that? 
All right, so that's so that's on the 24th. This you say Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. It starts at 5.30 at Town Hall, and it's, uh, it is a community forum, and it is a community forum on a potential zoning change. Again, I don't know if it's something that's really cut and dried and obvious. I don't really know the breadth of it, but I think it's nice to be present at these things so that we can um, just make our voices be heard about things that might impact you know, sustainability uh, and climate change. But the other thing, which uh, somebody specifically wrote to me and said that we should definitely be at, is um, on Thursday, February 1st, I believe that's at 7 in the evening, um, there is, uh, and I think I forwarded this to you, I got an invitation to this, um, somebody from the state is going to come talk about housing and zoning. And there is no doubt that they're going to talk about it, uh, in part, obviously there's a housing shortage, but in part from a sustainability perspective. So again, it would be great for us to hear what the state official has to say um, and to hear the interaction with the town officials regarding this and also, again, to uh, state our hope in anticipation that with respect to uh, zoning and, how, and building housing, that they bear in mind all the things that can really make a, a difference as far as sustainability and climate change, both with respect to you know looking for density, looking for density close to the train line, uh, and quite frankly, smaller smaller buildings, uh, which quite frankly is economically what people need anyways, uh, given the housing crisis. So I think really the the two uh, the two goals meet, uh, the housing goals and. Um, sustainability goals. So that's something else I will definitely, that one's at seven, so wait, that one's at six o'clock at night. But I, I definitely believe I forwarded that invitation to people. And again, a certain individual from the select board said, I assume you're coming. So so that would be, that would be uh, good to have a presence um, for that as well. Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm going back to community engagement. And I'll be really quick here because I know it's been a long meeting. Uh, SMAC wants to have us on. Uh, I've been talking with uh, Anya from SMAC and um, Joe Feaster, who used to have community forum on SMAC, but he's all, so in other words, he's many times had a program for many years on SMAC. I'm not sure he's regularly doing a program anymore, but upon special request, he has agreed to do a community, um, he has agreed to do a um, forum, shall we say, on SMAC with a live audience and with the remote audience, with Joe Feaster, who is a great interviewer, like he's a very serious individual, uh, you could not ask for anybody better to engage with on this topic. Um, so, um, and quite frankly, Anya is very excited about presenting this program, and she's going to publicize it. Uh, she thinks she actually would get people to attend. Um, so uh, I wanted to just lay that out there and we can sort of talk about who might want to attend. I don't have a date yet. I don't have a time of day. I don't know if it could be at 6 in the evening. I don't know if it has to be during the work day. Uh, but I will get back to you on that. Um, but, you know, people who would like to step forward and help be the spokespersons for the committee, uh, certainly I think we should have maybe two or three people um, uh, being able to participate in this. Um, and I think that would be uh, very significant as far as community engagement. So those are all the updates I have. Um, does anybody have uh, any other business that was not on the agenda that could not be anticipated or something they want to have on the agenda for next time? And obviously, you can always email me and ask me to add, add something to the agenda for next time. Oh, which I need to, I'm sorry, I need to clarify the next meeting date, which <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, is skipping an extra week, so it's going to be, instead of February 5th, it's going to be Monday, February 12th, okay. and then we'll have President's Weekend, we're skipping, and it'll be the 26th, so it'll be the 12th, so on the 12th, we're actually going to have to dig into uh, all our detailed plans for the 24th, because that'll be our okay. last meeting before the 24th. Um, but so yes, yeah, so we won't see you on the 5th, but we will see you on February 12th, but hopefully we will make a, a lot of progress with respect to our plans, uh, both for the SMAC event and also the, the library community engagement event. All right, anything else?
we cover everything? All right. Motion Thank you. Adjourn. Oh yes, we need a motion to adjourn. Anybody, uh, I think Michael just made the motion to adjourn. Any seconds? A second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.